Turning to our top story this hour, the UK has denied that its warship was fired upon by the Russian military. This after the Russian military said one of its warships fired warning shots and a warplane dropped bombs on Wednesday to force a British destroyer away from an area in the Black Sea near Crimea. Moscow claims UK trespassed its territorial waters. Russia has also released a video of the alleged incident. Moscow said that the UK warship changed its course minutes after the incident. Britain, however, denied that account and insisted its ship wasn't fired upon. In fact, UK Defence Secretary Ben Wallace accused Russia of spreading disinformation. Is the Russians recently made a claim about, I think, HMS Dragon and her trans... Uh, her, her use of the route a few months ago, claiming that she'd been chased out, which was uh, factually untrue as well. So, um, I mean, these are the things that come and go uh, with Russia. Disinformation, misinformation is something that we have seen regularly. Uh, we're not surprised by it. We plan for it. Uh, and we take all steps to make sure that we are not uh, escalatory or indeed provocative. Uh, however, we will not shy away from upholding international law and our rights on the sea. Russia has said that the Crimea naval incident was a crude provocation from the US and its allies. It accused the UK of violating international maritime laws. Moscow has also summoned the British ambassador to Russia over the incident. Значительно возросла активность военно-морских сил НАТО у наших границ. Практически на постоянной основе в Черном и Балтийском, Балтийском морях действуют корабли, оснащенные высокоточным оружием большой дальности. Выполняются полеты самолетов разведывательной, патрульной и ударной авиации, а также беспилотных летательных аппаратов. Действия кораблей США и их союзников носят явно провокационный характер. It is the first time since the Cold War that Moscow acknowledged using live ammunition to deter a NATO warship. The incident reflects rising tensions between Russia and the West, which has supported Ukraine. We on correspondent Julia Chapman is joining us live from Moscow. Julia, what's the latest on the tensions between the UK and Russia? The UK denies that its warship was fired upon by the Russians. That's right, but Russia is standing by its version of events yesterday in the Black Sea. We've been hearing from the Kremlin spokesman, Dmitry Peskov, who reiterated the foreign ministry's line that this was a provocation by the British. We've been hearing more from Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov, who issued quite a stern warning to the British. He called, them, uh, called on them to respect international law and said if they don't do so, uh, Russia will be able to drop bombs not only in the paths uh, of warships, but also on target, he said. So quite strong words from him really warning Britain and other NATO allies to stay away from what Russia sees as its territorial waters. Uh, but Britain, of course, denying that there was any kind of altercation, any warning shots fired. That isn't also the version of events we've been hearing from a couple of British journalists who were on board. They said that they did, in fact, hear shots being fired, uh, although there was no uh, confirmation that bombs had been dropped in the path of HMS Defender. Uh, but of course, this is all as uh, Russia has continuing to disagree with uh, many Western countries over the status of the Crimean Peninsula, which was annexed by Russia in 2014. Britain and NATO allies do regularly uh, have have their vessels traveling past the peninsula nearby as a sort of statement that they still believe it to be Ukrainian territory. But the Russians, of course, do not acknowledge that. They see it as their own land and see these moves as a provocation. And the Kremlin calls the incident with the British destroyer in the Black Sea a provocation. How do you see the whole situation panning out now? Well, it certainly has already been diffused. The HMS destroyer has moved past Crimea on its way to the Black Sea country of Georgia. There were, of course, Russian uh, Navy vessels shadowing it throughout its journey. There were reports that there were also some planes circling above as it made its way 
uh, to the port in Georgia, but more or less the thing, the situation has calmed down. Of course, the British ambassador has been summoned today to the Russian foreign ministry uh, to explain Britain's position on this incident. Yesterday, the defense attaché from the British embassy was summoned to the Ministry of Defense here in Moscow. So there will be some diplomatic fallout, certainly. Uh, the spokesman for the Kremlin, Dmitry Peskov, was asked whether Britain could be added to Russia's list of unfriendly nations. As it stands, that list is only two countries long, the US and the Czech Republic. Uh, he, Dmitry Peskov, said he didn't know yet whether that could be a possibility, uh, but there could certainly be further fallout, although the initial confrontation does appear to have subsided. And what impacts will this development have, do you think, on UK-Russia ties going forward? Well, the Russia-UK ties are already incredibly strained. They have been for many years and really came to a peak in 2018 when the UK accused Russia of carrying out an assassination attempt on a double agent living on British soil, Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia. Uh, of course, that incident led to widespread expulsions of diplomats on both sides. Many European countries, the US, also expelled Russian diplomats and the fallout was very significant. And ever since then, there have been certainly strained relations between Russia and the UK, although they have certainly calmed down since then. Uh, nevertheless, this comes at a time when Russia is uh, starting to have more dialogue with countries in the West. Just, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, President Vladimir Putin met with US President Joe Biden for the first time. There is, uh, there's some sounds coming out of the EU that there should be more dialogue with Russia. So there certainly does appear to be an effort to maintain dialogue with Russia, keeping the door open in order to prevent misunderstandings and incidents like this going forward. Thank you, Julia, for joining us live from Moscow and for your insights.